Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to welcome you to the first module uh, on that computable general equilibrium modeling. My name is Professor Adeola Adenikinju. I'm the head of the department, uh, Department of Economics, uh, University of Ibadan uh, in Nigeria. And uh, under this model, we're going to be looking again about the, on the objectives of the training, I'm going to take you through basic concepts in CG modeling. Uh, and we also look at the uh, issue of around theory, data, and shocks in CG modeling. By way of introduction, uh, there are a lot of examples that have shown that in proper implementation of economic policy, uh, could lead to large-scale macroeconomic disequilibrium or shocks, uh, which could you know, lead to crisis in countries. Um, we've seen many countries that implemented some policies uh, without you know, adequate thoughts as to the consequences of those policies. And uh, some of those results are very clear. Uh, there have been riots, governments have been overthrown, and there are all kinds of uh, uh, chaos or disequilibria have been witnessed in countries where you don't really look at the implications of economic policies. So when you conduct a macroeconomic policy, it's very important to know what are the costs and the benefits of those policies, okay? And macroeconomic model allows you to be able to experiment on those consequences before those policies decisions are taken. So you can actually gauge what are the potential impacts of the policy that you want to embark on. Now, CG models are very, very powerful when it comes to practical policy analysis. They can help policymakers and advisors to quantify ahead who will be the potential winners and losers of policy proposals. Okay, who are going to be the winners? Who are going to be losers? And what are they going to be the you know the unintended consequences of shocks that happen in the economy? Okay, so if a policymaker is aware of the potential winners and losers of policy proposals, then they will be able to put in place adequate measures, you know, that to take care of those who are going to lose uh, from those policy, you know, policy interventions. That's one of the strengths of CG models. It provides you with the opportunity, you know, to evaluate the potential winners and losers of policy proposals and therefore to put in place you know, remedial measures, you know, compensatory mechanisms that would take care of those who are going to lose. And you can also look at the impact of unanticipated shocks on oil price shock, for instance, on the economy. And so all of that will help you to then strengthen your policy formulation and response framework you know, to those policies proposals. CG models have been variously applied across the world to address various issues such as tax reforms, trade liberalization, economic integration, uh, changes in world prices of commodities like oil, like cocoa, and so on and so forth, changes in public expenditure. You know, they have been applied to sectors like energy, environment, and so on and so forth. So we hope that the end of this course of this model that ECEN members will be able to have a general knowledge of the functional capability of CG models. Participants will be exposed to theoretical basis of CG models, the structure of the, of the models, the database, and various interlinkages across models and sectors you know, of the model. Uh, 
little trade participants in the art of building CG models and car CG policy simulations using the GAM software. Uh, you know, learn the process of interpreting and presenting CG simulation results. And finally, like we mentioned earlier on, um, get participants to understand, you know, global models like GQ and MSG3 models. With respect to this particular model, participants will know what is what do you mean by computational equilibrium? When is it appropriate to use a CG model? What are the uses and limitations of CG models? And also finally, in what ways do CG models different from other types of macroeconomic models? This agenda is very important to measure from the beginning that CG models are very tasking. There's no, there's no hiding the truth. They are very tasking, they are very challenging, but they are rewarding. Because CG models will provide you with numerical results, you know, that combine economic theory with real economic data uh, that captures have to capture the multifarious impacts of policies on the economy. When you introduce a shock, the economy is interconnected. The shock that you introduce in a particular sector will have implications on other sectors of the economy. Okay. So a CG model allows you to capture those various impacts the, 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 on various sectors of the economy, on various economic agents various markets, and so on and so forth. CG models help to shed light on real world policy issues. So when you introduce a particular policy, like increasing you know, value added tax, you know, removal of you know, energy subsidies, you know, uh, you know, increasing the price of oil, you know, the impact of COVID-19, now, these are real world issues. And the CG models allows you not to just look at the impact of such policies on the sector of the economy, but you are looking at it on the entire sectors, on the entire economy. So that gives you a very robust you know, analysis. Now, for somebody to be able to have a very good grip of CG model, it's very important that you then have the master of economic theories, you must know economic theories. Economic theories are very fundamental to CG models. So you must have the familiar with the COVID data information, and you also have very robust mathematical and econometric knowledge. So as a, to be a very successful CG modeler, you have, must be good in economic theory, you must be good, good in data analysis, you must also be good in, you know, in, in mathematical modeling. Uh, mathematical relationships, so econometric methodologies. They are all, they are all very useful uh, in contributing to the knowledge of CG modeling. Like we said, CG model have been applied variously to policy issues and shocks uh, in the areas of international trade, in the area of tax reforms, in the area of public expenditure, climate change, infrastructure, COVID-19, you know. I mean, there's no sector of the economy that CG models have not been applied to. And therefore, I will encourage you to actually look at some of the previous works in this area, you know, so that you can see the very robust and the wide applications of CG models. One thing you will find out from these studies, these studies that have applied CG models, is that you see how you can transform abstract general equilibrium theories into practical policy analysis. You know, you are going from theoretical structure of general equilibrium theories into applying this into real world economic phenomena, into real practical policies. Now, what do we mean by CG? 
the accruing CG computable. Why is it computable? It is because it can be solved numerically. It is computable because the model can be solved numerically. It is general because it is economy wide. It's not just looking at a sector of the economy or a market of the economy. It's looking at the entire sectors. It's looking at the, the different markets of the economy. Look at the various economic agents. So it's very general. And it's equilibrium because it is looking at equilibrium conditions in the economy. Once you solve it, it's going to give you the outcome that will lead the economy into an equilibrium position where there are no opposing influence. At equilibrium, it is assumed that optimal efficiency is granted prior to efficiency is, 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 is generated. Some of these things we'll see them later on as we go in this in this course. CG model provides a framework to stimulate policy changes and allows for traceable impact on key economic variables, especially through the income and expedition flows. Give back to the 17 wing to 2004. So we're going to see again that later on that how policy changes permeate through the system, how it impacts on various economic variables, you know, how it changes income, how it impacts on expenditure, how it impacts on investment and savings, and so on and so forth. So this issue will be discussed later on as we look at the theoretical background of CG models. CG models can be applied either to study what happened in a single country or multiple countries. Again, I mean, in my, in the past, I've used CG models to look at, you know, uh, various shocks of the Nigerian economy. I've looked at issue of subsidies, I've looked at VAT, I've looked at, you know, COVID-19, you know, uh, you know, so and so forth, so many applications of uh, CG models to Nigeria, which I've been able to do. I also look at the impact on networks. Uh, for instance, my, my colleague and I, uh, we look at uh, the impact of uh, economic partnership agreement between the EU and West Africa to see you know, whether the EU, the EPA, Economic Policy Agreement, uh, Economic Partnership in Agreement would be to the benefit of the various countries in ECOWAS. So you can apply the model to a single country or you can apply it to a group of countries, a region, or even for the entire world. CG models can be static or dynamic. It is static when you are looking at a country at a point in time. You are looking at a part of a policy on an economy or a group of country at a point in time. So time is not relevant. You're not looking at, you know, over time. You're just looking at a point in time. You are looking at a base year. And you want to examine the impact of that policy on that base year. Now, that is different from dynamic CG. In dynamic CG, you are looking at the impact of policy over a time horizon. Maybe the next 10 years, maybe the next 20 years, maybe the next 30 years. So you are looking at, so you are looking at over time. Static is at a time, at a point you are looking at it, a point in time, at a base year. Dynamic, you are looking at it over a period of time. Now, CG model has various advantages. Um, keep back to the 17, uh, list some of those advantages. One, they are that they are consistent with, you know, highly theoretical, consistent, consistent, consistent. What does that mean? It means that the CG model is consistent with it, with economic theories. Theory about the consumer, theory about the producer, you know, uh, that they are optimizing, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, 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 so those theoretical concepts are preserved, you know, other CG models. So they highly, the side degree of theoretical, theoretical correctness, they are based on macroeconomic foundations, the axioms of consumer behavior, the axiom of producer's behavior, welfare theories general equilibrium theory. So, so you can be sure that CG model is based on highly theoretical 
consistent structure. Two, CG models employ economic theories without violating you know, uh, the principles in the execution of the model, the economic principles. For instance, you know, if we have income Y that is received by household and that income is spent on consumption of goods and services and savings after the judgment of tax by the government. Now, when you estimate the model, the CG model, you will find out that all of these, you know, uh, accounting relationship are also maintained. You will find out that disposable income will be distributed as Y minus taxes. Savings, why deal will also be disposable income also because of consumption plus savings. So all those identities that you have in economic theories are preserved in a CG model. So you can, you can, you can check that Y will be equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So those accounting identities in economic theory are also preserved in our CG models. CG models also help to identify the direct and indirect linkages between economic agents and sectors in the economy. CG model is like a circular flow of income, or circular how the blood how the blood system works. Circular flow, of, you know, uh, of income. In the circular flow of income, you see interdependencies across economic agents, households, firms, governments. They are interdependent, and the sectors of the economy are also interdependent. So you can see the direct and indirect linkages. And it happens to one part of the economy has implications on other parts of the economy. That is also part of the beauty of CG models. Third, the model provides CG model provides insight into the working and values of many economic variables within the given system of equations. They also help to bridge the gap between economists, modelers, and policymakers on policy issues through dialogue. You know, policymakers, modelers, economists can sit together. The economist is interested in the, you know, uh, economic, economic concerns of economic theories. The modelers is the one that wants to build the model. The policymakers also has his own idea about what he wants to see, what he wants to achieve. Okay, you know, so the mod the CG model modeler is able to bridge the gap because the what theory is saying and the empirical uh, uh, impact or, of policies that are of interest to policymakers. So it's able to, you know, it's able to bring all of them together, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a policy through a dialogue, through dialogue, so that the interest of everybody is accommodated, as it were. Now let's look at shocks. CG model is an important model that is used whenever the impact of shock is concerned. I mentioned this earlier. When we are trying to look at the impact of shocks on the economy, for example, COVID-19 that came in 2020 was a huge shock that impacted not just that impacted on the, on the entire world. So it has global impacts, also had national impacts. Now, you know, and it comes through various channels. One of the channels through the cream is international price of oil, especially for countries that are dependent on oil, uh, like Nigeria. So when the price of oil went down because of the COVID, it has significant implications on the Nigerian economy. Now it introduced shocks into the system. And the impact of that shocks can be measured using computable general equilibrium model. And, and we, you know, in 2020, myself and some colleagues, we actually examined the impact of COVID-19 uh, on the Nigerian economy uh, using the contributor and global model. It can also be used to evaluate uh, policy reforms. Okay. We can use CG model to assert the impact of policy reforms, such as subsidies, you know, and taxes. 
you know, on the economy. Um, it's like a laboratory. You can evaluate in that laboratory. If we remove the subsidies once, what to be the impact? If we remove it in a stepwise manner, gradually, gradual phase out of subsidies, what are the implications? So, just like a laboratory, you can know the various impact of any of those decisions on the economy. Okay, whether a once and for all withdrawal of subsidies or a gradual you know, removal of subsidies, which one is better? Which one is, you know, uh, uh, it's better for the economy. We can also look at UCG model to look at that. And like I also mentioned earlier on, you can do static and dynamic modeling using CG. I must say to mention that CG models have their own limitations. So we must be very, we must, we must be aware of that. Um, CG model does not, cannot be applied in all situations and it does not solve all problems and they also have they also have their own limitations. One of the limitations is that CG models require substantial data. Okay, we need data for the entire sectors of the economy. You need to build a SAM, you need to get parameters, you need to get elasticities, not just on a single commodity, but on a group of commodities, on various commodities, you know. Uh, fact on various factors of production and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, so you need to have trade elasticities, you have product elasticities, you have, you know, uh, factor elasticities. You know, now all of these are huge challenges, and it's many economists it may be difficult to actually get all of this data or elasticity, elasticity and parameters. So what we do. Uh, in many cases, we have to borrow from the literature. We have to borrow some of the elasticities from countries that are similar to us, or we make assumptions about them uh, so that uh, you know we can, we can still apply CG models even when all of those data may not be present. It also requires huge human and capital resources. To build CG models requires time. It requires time, and therefore, if you are lazy, uh, it will be difficult for you to be a very good CG modeler uh, because you require commitments and time to master it. For instance, building a guy, building a social accounting matrix may take time. It takes painstaking efforts. Again, when you simulate a model, a CG model, you may not get results because there are some errors in your in your in your in your GAMS you know code. Therefore, you have to go through it one by one, you know, uh, line by line, uh, to be sure that all the errors are coming, you know, have been taken care of. Because if there's a single error, you will not even get, you don't even get results. Gas will not give you results if, there, if you are not taking care of all the errors. So this take time, and therefore a CG modeler must be able to give the time that is needed. Now, CG models attempt to cover all the sectors of the economy. Okay, you want to cover the entire economy. But in the course of trying to do that, we may not be very detailed enough. We may not be able to examine carefully each of the sectors, you know, and give it the attention that is needed. Okay, in fact, it's even possible to omit a critical sector uh, in the course of trying to cover the entire sectors of the economy. Sometimes people have criticized uh, CG models that look, it's a black box. You know, it's a black box because there are so many equations to be, to be estimated. And when results come out, it's, an, you know, it's, 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 it's influence of both, of all the various sectors. You know, all the sectors are working together to generate results. So you have various influences that are at work. And therefore, when resources come out, uh, some people feel that we, they cannot really trace, they cannot explain how those resources are derived. And therefore, they call it the Center CG model as a black box. Okay. And also because of the assumptions and the parameters that have come into that have been assumed or used in the model, they come out with resources that, you know, that a lot of that some people questioned. Uh, and criticize that 
you know, that uh, the resource are derived from black box. Uh, example of one of the critics, or some of the critics, Panakaria and Peter Gupta in 2001, who note in the context of liberalization that, and I want to quote, on anything the future of CG models that drive their resource is often a, a time consuming exercise. This is because their share size, facilitated by recent advances in computer technology, makes it difficult to pinpoint the precise source of a particular result. They often remain a black box. Indeed, frequently, authors are themselves unable to explain their results intuitively. And when pressed, resort to uninformative answers. Now, that's a, that's a criticism of uh, resource and CG models, you know, uh, generate. But, you know, this is not entirely true. Uh, this criticism is not entirely true. It's simply because some people don't understand what is going on in CG models. If you are building your, <coughs> excuse me, if you are building your model, you want, CG models are built on when known theoretical you know, relationship. They are built, they, so there are theories. There are equations that are derived from theories. And no matter how complicated that model is, they are still based on the theories. Theories of consumer behavior, theories of producer behavior, theories of interactions among economic agents. And so, so they are based on theories. So once you understand these theories, and you also understand the assumptions that have been made with respect to elasticities, you know, and the uh, parameters in the model, then it becomes it easy to be able to explain the result that you have. So those results are not things that you cannot explain. You know, they are derived from transparent process. They are derived from equations, you know, that have been carefully written out, that are based on the common theories, you know, they are based on you know, they are based on parameters that you can explain, you know, in terms of how they work. And in fact, you can do sensitivity analysis to actually evaluate the impact of these, you know, parameters and elasticities on the result that you have obtained. So uh, to a lot of us who use this. CG models. Uh, we don't agree that's a black box. We know that the, the, the model has been derived, the results have been derived from where, you know, uh, specified equations and models, you know, of the economy. Now, CG models are a type of macroeconomic models. And it's very important to know how they are different from other modeling approaches. One is a macroeconomic model, the macroeconomic model. That means that CG models, is, in fact, we can call it a, it's a CG models are multi-sectoral macroeconomic models, multi-sectoral, which means that they capture the entire economy and account for interactions across various sectors. So they're not like partial equilibrium models that focus on a single sector of the economy or a single market. There are partial equilibrium models, for example, that can look at you know, what are the agricultural sectors of the economy or what happened in the labor market or what's happening in the, you know, uh, to import, what's happening to export. Those are partial equilibrium models. In a CG model, you are looking at all of this together. You are looking at labor market, you are looking at capital market, you are looking at trade market, uh, you know, giant trade market, you are looking at domestic market, you are looking at economic agents, be it households, be it producers, be it government, be it rest of the world. You know, so, so it captures the entire market. So you are not just looking at agricultural sector, you are looking at agricultural sector, you are looking at industrial sector, you are looking at services sector. So since you model capture the entire economy and try to account for interactions across those various sectors of the economy. So you model both the supply side and the demand side of the economy. It has, you know, it, it incorporates both supply side, it's a, the demand side, price movements, you know, 
of the economy and has no capacity constraints. Now, compared to microeconomic mode forecasting model, CG model have its very strong foundation and economic theory. You know, it's based on, you know, CG model is based on strong economic theory, spread in part of macroeconomic theory. Macroeconomic theory is the part of economic theory that is well developed. It may started from, you know, Adam Smith. Macroeconomic model is based on, you know, macro theory, macroeconomic theory which is following from what Keynes did in 1936. So whereas, you know, um, you can trace CG models to Adam Smith, you know, and his colleagues, you know, uh, in this 18th century, uh, CG model is a more recent, more recent, uh, uh, macroeconomic models are more recent, <coughs> kind of traced to the 20th century. So we have identified various uh, types of uh, macroeconomic models. We have the linear program model, you have input post models, you have macroeconomic model, you have computer with general program model. Now, in the next table, we try to compare all of these popular models across some criteria. Their methodology, the time horizon, their focus, temporal structure, nature of data, type of economic system, Aspect of economies that they focus on are the ministries of government that you know uh, that are of interest uh, to them. Now, this as shown in Figure One. So, in Figure One, we have model classification: is it linear program LP, input output model IO, macroeconomic model MM, or CG model. Uh, so we use various metrics, you know, methodology, time horizon, focus, temporal structure, nature of data, type of economic system, aspect of economies that they focus on, ministries of interest, to show the differences across these various uh, categories of models. Now, I must mention here that this does not mean that uh, you, you cannot apply this very, in a very strict sense. Uh, what we're trying to do is that, you know, on the average, you know, this average feature of, you know, uh, of the various types of models, you know. Uh, so, for instance, you could have a microeconomic model that looks at both the short and the medium term, okay, um, or that try to incorporate like, both real sector and monetary sector. So. So it's not as if you don't have models that can uh, uh, may not really fill into these categories that we put in here. Uh, but what we're trying to do is on the average, on the average, the typical models, you know, how do they address some of these issues uh, that we have addressed, that we have listed here. Now, in terms of the methodology, uh, the linear programming, input output, and CG model are based on those classical underpinning. So if you go back, you know, to the table again, in terms of methodology, macroeconomic models are mainly Keynesian or monetarist. They have the focus Keynesian or monetarist, you know, economic, you know, uh, school of thoughts. Whereas linear programming, input up on models, CG models are based on strong neoclassical foundations. Okay. In terms of time horizon, microeconomic models are basically for short time because money is very important. And monetary nominal values are very important in microeconomic models. Prices, nominal values, or nominal price and nominal values can only be used. <clears throat> can only be used to forecast short-term phenomena. Okay, whereas linear programming, input-output models, and CG models are used for medium to long term because they are based on they are they are, they are focused on they are focused uh, on relative prices, non-nominal non-nominal magnitudes. They are looking at relative prices. They are looking at resource allocations, you know, that are based on, 
the axles that drive economic agents. And therefore, you know, uh, whether short term or long term, economic agents are going to optimize. So, linear programming, CG, or CG model in particular, they are focused on medium to, they are used for medium to long term. In terms of the set of the economy where that are of interest, macroeconomic models are basically monetary sector. They look at monetary, uh, focus on monetary issues, nominal issues, like I mentioned. Okay. Uh, issue of interest rate, nominal interest rate, issue of nominal prices, issue of uh, nominal exchange rates, and so on and so forth. Uh, money demand, money supply, and uh, things like that. Those are monetary phenomena and nominal phenomena. Whereas when you're looking at CG, you're looking at linear program, your input output, you would have focus on real sector of the economy. So for most CG models, you're not going to find a monetary block. You no, know, we are not going to find nominal prices. We are not going to find find you know nominal interest rates or interest rates. Focus on sectors or resource allocation. You know, relative prices, things that matter in the middle to lot them. So those are the things that are focused on the CG model. Now, in terms of temporal structure, CG models are primarily static. Now, again, that's it's you have some CG models that are dynamic, but if you put together 100 CG models, uh, almost 70% of them are likely to be static or comparative static, looking at two static positions. Okay. Uh, whereas micro models are temporal, they're essentially you know, dynamic. They are based on long time data. Okay. They look at trends, historical data, and they use that to make projections. Okay. So, Macro models are generally temporal, they're generally dynamic in nature. RCG models are essentially focused on comparative static analysis. In terms of nature of data, macro models are they use time series, they are data intensive. Okay. They use maybe consumption, you are looking at consumption over 20, 30 years. GDP, you are looking at data over a lot of you know, number of years. Whereas when you're looking at CG model, they are just looking at data for a particular year. So the focus of data is cross-sectional. They are looking at just a year. So it's data extensive. So that year, you are going to look at a whole lot of data sets. But data sets are just for a single year. Whereas in Magalone model, you are looking at data, you are looking at time series data. Okay, it's very intensive. But you know, in the case of a CG model, they are data extensive. Now, to the economy that they are more suit suitable for, a linear program and input output model are oriented for to command economy, socialist economy, uh, where government has a lot of influence. Whereas macro econometric model and CG models are tuned to market, to market systems. Okay, where that are determined by the interplay of invisible forces, you know, demand and supply are active, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, with respect to the aspect of economies that they focus on, linear programming, put up with people and CG models are essentially microeconomic. Um, they're looking at sectors, individual markets, individual sectors. So they bring this together in a mind in a, in a, in a in a general equilibrium framework, you know, but the underlying philosophy is, is macroeconomics. Whereas macroeconomic macro models are essentially macroeconomics. They are focusing on, you know, uh, income determinations, you know, across uh, consum consumer agents, investment, you know, uh, government export imports, you know, uh, that was essentially, you know, macroeconomics. Now, in terms of Ministry of Interest, you know, Ministry of Finance will essentially be interested in, you know, uh, macroeconomic models. They are short term. They are interested in government revenue, government income. They are interested in taxes. You know, in uh, in what happens to, to to revenue in the one year. You know. So, they are, so finance is more of a short term thing. You know. Uh, making projections about uh, what happened to taxes and you know uh, to expenditure and things like that. 
uh, part of exchange, you know, uh, exchange rate prices, inflation, and things like that. Those are what will be of interest to measure finance. But for measure of planning, uh, where you're looking at resource allocation, you're looking at issues of growth, of development, the NCG models are more appropriate. So this uh, slide, you know, essentially described uh, what they elaborated, they elaborated on what I've just discussed, you know, in terms of differences between CG models, uh, linear program model, and the putter model. So again, this slide is also for the elaboration of what, what you have mentioned. Now, when is CG model appropriate? It's good to consider when is CG model appropriate. It's important to mention that CG is not an appropriate method for all types of questions. Uh, so it matters when the structure of the club is very important. Okay, when you are interested in the structural composition of the economy, then CG model matters. If a policy is going to be part of the structure of the club, it's going to affect the composition of the club, it's going to affect you know, uh, the relative size of agriculture to manufacturing to uh, services, then the structural matters. Or when you are looking at different countries, you know, uh, where, you know, then you are interested in you know, the structure of the economy may be very important. So if the structure of the economy is very important, then CG model uh, is the more appropriate framework to use. Two, so when you are interested in interactions across sectors, when intersectoral linkages matter in your analysis, then the general equilibrium model is very important. If, for instance, you remove subsidies in the petroleum sector, that's going to impact on transportation sector. It's going to have impact on the electricity sector. It's going to have impact on the industrial sector. Now, so you have intersectoral linkage. So in that case, the CG model is very important because CG model focuses on intersectoral linkages. So when intersectoral linkages matter, then CG model can be used. The third character is feedbacks. When the PACA policy has feedback effects, again, we look at as well as these feedbacks when they have, you know, direct and indirect implications. I mean, example again is when you petroleum subsidy, when you withdraw petroleum subsidy. Yes, in the petroleum sector, you may have more revenue, but it's going to have implications on what is happening in the transportation sector. So it will affect investment in the transportation sector, okay? Which will affect demand uh, for petroleum products in the petroleum sector, which also will have implications on the final outcome in the petroleum sector. So, so, so when feedback becomes very important, when your action is going to create some feedbacks, going to create that idea of feedbacks, then the CG model becomes very important. Criteria four is more relative prices matter. If relative prices matter, uh, then, you know, uh, CG model is, is really very important. Uh, economic agents in terms of resource allocations are looking at relative prices. I look at relative prices. So if uh, you want, for instance, to encourage domestic production, what do you do? You increase the import tariff or taxes on imports. So when you increase you know, tariffs on imports or taxes on imports, domestic prices will become cheaper than imported prices, than imported products, and therefore, you are indirectly changing incentives to favor domestic agents, domestic producers. So when relative price change, when you increase tax or impose tax on imported commodities, you increase tariffs, it's going to change the relative price 
of between imported goods and domestic goods. And in that case, a CG model is the more appropriate framework to use. So when you're not just interested in nominal prices and inflation, or what is inflation, you're interested in you know, uh, relative prices, the CG model is very important. Criteria four, five, historical trend. If the historical trend does not count, that is, if the policy question involves later change, later change that is outside historical experiences, the NCG matter is very important. So we are going to look at history. Oh, what happened five years ago? And you know, what you are looking at, you know, there are changes that in the current historical, the past is not as important as what is happening now. The NCG model becomes very important. Now, CG model has implications on SDG or can be used to study SG, SDGs. And there have been several applications of CG model to evaluate the sustainability impact of the SDGs. CG model can be used to provide insights and understanding of the decomposition effects of policy that emanates or that impacts on the environment, on economics, and social impacts, you know, which is what the uh, SDG sort of by SDG concerned with the environment, concerned with the economics, concerned with social impacts or policies. And in the next figure, we we'll try to show various studies that we use to address the 17, you know, SDG goals. You know, uh, so you, you, you can look at them and you can, you know, uh, get all these papers uh, and use them for any area of SDG that you're interested in. For instance, on no poverty, uh, when I sing it 2019, on the zero hunger, you have a war between 24. If you're interested in go ahead and wave in, that's uh, SDG 3, then there's series 2030. If it's quality ed education, okay, you can use that. You can look at Ceres 20, 20, 20, 2020. Data inequality, clean water, affordable and clean energy, uh, module at all 2020. Uh, this same work and economic growth. You can look at Denham and Shena, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduce inequality, survived, sustainable cities, Warringa. Responsive consumption, you know, series 2020, climate change. There are so many stories in the material. Life below water, green, green energy, green, um, blue, blue, blue economy, uh, Tavoni and others. Life on land, Munasingi, uh, peace. So, so there was a obvious application of CG models to, you know, to SCG issues. And therefore, you can, you know, if you are looking at SDG, you can actually get any of these studies, you know, uh, to serve as a guide. Now, let's look at uh, the next issue is components of CG. When you see a CG model, what are the various or CG studies? What are the various components mm -hmm. that you need to look at? Uh, and we wish to also uh use as a guide one that must be strong to record the opinion of your of, of your specifications the equations of cg models are derived from strong theoretical foundations or the opinion and these theoretical specifications are also consistent with our set set of base data okay so you, you have to maintain the data consistency that we have. So you have strong theory that is also based on you know, strong uh, data coherence. Mm -hmm. So the data multiplied structure of your relationship with an economy. So you have to have data, structural data, rural data. Social data covers activities in production, consumption, trade, and government, and is derived from report output models or share country metrics. Behavior data 
describe how the system responds to changes. So this, how they respond to changes, you know, is it a very flexible response? Is it elastic? Is it elastic? Is it unitary? You know, uh, now this will depend on the elasticity that you have assumed. And elasticity could be demand elasticity, you know, production, supply elasticity, trade elasticities, and so on and so forth. Normally, these elasticities are derived from previous econometric work. But where you cannot get, you know, econometric work that gives you the appropriate elasticities, you can borrow from other countries. Then there's a shock that you want to examine what are the, you know, the shocks of policies that uh, scenarios, simulations are trying to carry out. Then there's a show of closure. Now, this is very important in CG modeling. How do you close your model? Closure is the time for the choice of which variables are endogenous and which are exogenous. What are the variables that you want the system to determine endogenous, and which are the ones that you are imposing that are exogenous? Uh, so, that, so the flow of causality is from exogenous to endogenous. So the choice of closure represents some views, views of the current theory. You know, so closure can be around factor markets. Uh, you know, the, the labor supply and the visit fish is labor mobile across sectors. Capital is capital supply, is it fish? Is capital mobile across sector? These are some of the things that you also have to look at. Service and investments, is investment exogenous or is investment determined? by the amount of savings that's available in the economy. Now, interpreting result from CG models. Now we can summarize, you know, I use this uh, chart here to look at the, the, the entire relationship among various components of the CG model. So on the left hand side, we have theory, you know, or equations, you have the data, you have other parameters that are used to generate initial results or to generate results known as, in, you know, initial equilibrium, okay? Now, so this initial equilibrium must be able to be consistent one-on-one -on -one with the data, with the structure, with the data of the economy. So based on your theory, on the sub, other parameters, you specify equations that they are then used to, you know, to generate the initial equilibrium. And this initial, initial equilibrium must reflect the base year values. So replicate the initial equilibrium based on the available data without any policy shocks. Now, when this initial equilibrium represents the underlying baseline data, then you have confidence that this is a good model. Okay, now after that, you then introduce policy shocks. Now, when you introduce policy shock, for instance, increase in labor supply, increase in foreign direct investment, increase in immigration, increase in population growth. Now, when you introduce those policy shocks or increase in tariffs, it will then, will then generate another set of results that will be the new equilibrium. So you have the initial equilibrium without any policy shocks that reflects the baseline data, and then you introduce shocks, and then they get a new set of equilibrium, and then you then compare the new equilibrium with the initial equilibrium. Now, and you calculate the percentage change. So that allows you to see the effect of the policy shock on, on the economy. Now, we have mentioned this in our earlier discussion, that to be able to be a good CG modeler, there are some qualities that you must have. One, you must have basic knowledge about microeconomics and macroeconomics. You must have some, or willing to learn about how to, you know, put data together, uh, how to build a share country matrix, or how to use a database, you must be able to use a, 
you know, GAMS, you know, you want some knowledge of computer programming, you know, you know, why well, you don't have to know about computer programming? Because GAMS, you can learn GAMS. It's a language you write, you convert your equations to GAMS language, you might be able to do that. And you must be able to understand the structure of the economy you are dealing with. Because each economy has its own features. So you must be able to have a understanding of the economy that you are dealing with. Um, and, and all of those uh, are not very, are not, they are not too tough qualities for you to have. And uh, hopefully at the end of this course, uh, you'll be able to have, you'll be able to have appreciable improvement in the areas of, you know, or in, a, in, a, in improving your skills in the area of theories, in the areas of uh, construction academies, and, uh, but not the least, uh, in the applications of uh, uh, the use of uh, uh, general algebraic uh, mathematical system gaps, you know, to uh, to code your equations or code your model, as they would say. A model in CG model, we adopt the following steps. Uh, one, you must identify the issues you are interested in. Uh, so you must be very clear what is it that you want to do. Okay. Uh, uh, what is the issue? Is it trade policy? And if it's trade policy, what are the instruments of trade policy that you want to evaluate or that you want to use to approximate trade policy changes? It could be tariffs. Okay. It could be trade. Uh, um, uh, how to you know, fast track trades, you know, uh, and, and so and so and so forth. Uh, then we'll construct a mathematical model that is concerned with theories. So you, you have to build equations of the model, and this equation will be concerned with the theory. Then you must look for the various data on the issue, uh, you know. Then you then see how you can incorporate those changes, you know, the shocks you want to examine into your model. So this is what we compose we propose triple instrument to the existing model with similar contribution to the model. So basically, most of the time, you have existing structure of your CJ model. Now, depending on your study, you may want to then expand certain segments of the sector of the CG model so that, you know, that will allow you to be able to study the but to, to investigate the part of the particular policy that you're interested in. Number five, this is where you then must then replicate, you use this your model to replicate the benchmark data. Very critical SCG models that will be able to replicate your base data, base year values. So if you if you are investigate, if you want to use a CG model to look for it to examine, for instance, the impact of COVID-19. And you have the social accounting matrix of 2018 or 2019. Now, when you specify your equations and you bring in your parameters and the data for the social accounting matrix, and you, you know, you run your model, you will be able to replicate 100% all the data, the initial database for the economy. So that is why, unlike macroeconomic model, which is stochastics, which gives you for error times, in CG model, there are no error times. It is deterministic. You must be able to replicate 100% initial data. So if your disposable income is C plus H, consumption plus savings, it then means that if you have value for YD, disposable income value for C, consumption value for S savings, the two of them must be equal. That's no error time. So your left hand side of the equation will be exactly equal to the right hand side, the components of the equations. So that is deterministic. So CG models are deterministic. There's no room for error time. There's no room for you know, difference between the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation. So you know, the next time is policy shock is introduced and result is generated reflecting the policy shock. Result generated is interpreted by comparing the new values to the benchmark and percentage change we mentioned that before. Now, 
the final thing we're going to say is or mention at this at this level is what are the mathematical programs that you need to solve CGA models? For single country models, you need GAPS and GEMPAC. For global models, you can use GEMPAC and GTAB. Okay, you can also use GAPS. So, so GAPS uh, is, is, is uh, what we're going to use uh, for, for this course, uh, and it can be used to solve country, single country models. It can also be used to solve global models. Thank you. So you will see some quizzes that we that we give it to you later on uh, that will help you to check your understanding of this course. And there are a lot of references, a number of references that have also been provided uh, that will help you to have an understanding of, of the of of the you know of the issues that we have addressed in this model. Uh, but if you still have questions. Uh, please send the questions to us and we'll address them and get back to you. Thank you very much.